Now to our Meet the Candidate series. It's your chance to hear from the men and women in our area running for office. Today we hear from former Ambassador Carla Sands. She's seeking the Republican nomination for the U.S. Senate in Pennsylvania. Sands is a Camp Hill native who served as an ambassador to Denmark during the Trump administration. She's a former chiropractor who took over her husband's investment firm after his death in 2015. Sands lived most of her adult life in California, but she moved back to the Commonwealth last year. She was an early supporter of of President Donald Trump and contributed to his campaign. Other Republicans seeking their party's nomination for the U.S. Senate include conservative TV commentator Kathy Barnett, Montgomery County businessman Jeff Bartos, Mehmet Oz, who is well-known nationwide for his Dr. Oz TV show, and David McCormick, who is a former hedge fund CEO. The Democrats include Congressman Connor Lamb, Pennsylvania Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman, and State Representative Malcolm Kenyatta. Now, the seat they're all trying to fill belongs to U.S. Senator Pat Toomey. He has decided not to seek a third term. I recently talked to Carla Sands about her candidacy and what she would do if she wins. Why should voters choose you as their next senator? Sure. So I'm a fiscal conservative. I'm a social conservative. I'm a constitutional conservative. And I'd like to share those thoughts with your viewers today. I am the only candidate in this race who actually helped Donald Trump get elected president in 2016. And like I have every single Republican candidate for president since I've been an adult, because we're the party of strong families, strong small business and constitutional freedoms. But he also appointed me as his ambassador to the Kingdom of Denmark. I'm the only candidate in this race who worked in the Trump administration. Uh, now, you obviously have roots here in Pennsylvania, but you had not been living in Pennsylvania for a while. Why do you think you are better to represent Pennsylvanians than someone who had been living here the whole time? Well, Lauren, I'm an eighth generation Pennsylvanian. My Pennsylvania ancestors fought in the American Revolution and in the Civil War. And I truly believe this is our time to fight for the heart and soul of our nation. The Democrat Party of today is not the Democrat Party that I grew up with. It is radicalized. It is controlled by people like AOC and Bernie Sanders. The American people and the people of Pennsylvania did not sign up for this. They thought they were getting Joe Biden from Scranton, but they got a radical left agenda. The Biden administration is causing inflation that is hurting our Pennsylvania families. What are what specifically would you do to address inflation if you are elected and what would you like to see your colleagues do? Sure. So we can see how shocking the inflation is just a year into this radical Biden administration. It's largely because of their shocking spending in Washington. So we have to stop it. No and more. Where would you cut specifically? Well, in these multi-trillion dollar bills that are being passed on a very slim majority in the Senate are many gifts to the far left. They're Green New Deal handouts that try to, they are going to try to fundamentally regulate every aspect of our lives and force people into things like electric cars and force people into different ways of building their houses, living their lives, running their businesses. They're attempting to even put Green New Deal kind of environmental regulations into our lending system. This administration is so radical, I wouldn't vote for any of their appointees because they're not normal Democrats. These are people. And, and I, I understand you're talking about some of the proposals in the Build Back Better plan that has not passed um, the Senate at this point. Uh, but where specifically, you said, you know, cut back on spending. Where specifically would you cut? So there are tens. I've read through some of these bills, even the ones that have passed. cut in the in existing spending, because those those bills have not been passed. So that's not spending that they're doing right now. But, there uh, but is the inflation, spending obviously, that... is, is, is something people are, are experiencing right now. So what, right. what would you cut um, in the spending that you're, you're saying is contributing to that? So there's so there's two areas that we need to get a hold of. One is the supply chain, which is also contributing to the inflation. The Biden administration, because of the, they are so beholden to certain unions, not all unions, but certain ones, the supply chain is largely disrupted. It's not just the problems in Asia. It's also here at home. But there are $10 billion gifts here and $100 billion gifts there to certain 
very far left groups and cities to give them money that eventually comes back to the Democrat Party for more political control. It's it's baked into even the bills that have already passed. Rather than Republicans doing their job and being strong fiscal conservatives, they passed bills that may have had some good things for Pennsylvania, but they also had things that were largely gifts. And I mean, in 10 Can you give me an example? I'm not sure I'm I'm not sure I'm following exactly what you're saying. Can you give me an example? Rather than bore your viewers with exactly where the money is going, it's going to far left groups. And here's what 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 I will say. What, What which groups are you talking about? There are many far left groups and also cities that are not following the law that are having that are offering sanctuary to illegal immigrants that are well, um, Philadelphia Philadelphia is know, it a, so we are having ghost flights come so in are you saying that you would cut money to Philadelphia you would you would cut so, back on the money that Philadelphia gets from the federal government so Philadelphia needs to enforce the laws they are allowing criminals to roam the streets and hurt people in Philadelphia you have an out of control prosecutor there and prosecutors and the mayor who are basically radical leftists who are not enforcing the laws in Philadelphia. Now it's spilling into the suburbs. We need to make sure the number one job of an elected official is the safety and security of the people that they represent. They're not. So is there some funding that you're saying you would cut to Philadelphia? So what I'm saying is I think there are ways at the federal level to force these cities not to defund the police, to enforce the laws, to make sure that violent criminals are not on the streets, that if people are repeat offenders, that they pay the price. And then, of course, Republicans are the party of second chances. Then we need to welcome people that have done their time back into civil society and let them have opportunities. You served in the Trump administration as ambassador to to Denmark. Have you spoken with President Trump about your candidacy and did you ask for his endorsement? Well, every candidate in this race would love to have President Trump's endorsement, but I never get ahead of President Trump. He is the leader of the Republican Party. He has claimed that he won Pennsylvania and uh, the general election in 2020, even after his legal challenges failed in that. Do you acknowledge that President Trump lost the 2020 election? So we had a red wave in Pennsylvania in 2020. We had a red wave in Pennsylvania in 2021. We're going to have a red tsunami this year because people are so upset at the radical Biden administration. And I refer you to Rand Paul's statement. He said, was the election of 2020 stolen? He said, yes, it was. It was well, stolen do you believe, legally. Do you, do you believe that it was that it was stolen? Senator Rand Paul referred to a forensic audit. Well, that, I'm asking you because you're running for... You're and I'm for answering you. you let me answer the question, Lauren. Thank you. Certainly. Senator Rand Paul said, I refer you to the forensic audit that determined that the private money contributed by Mark Zuckerberg and his friends, almost half a billion dollars to control how the election was conducted or held, changed the outcome of the election. And Donald Trump would have won without that private money controlling the election. So I think we should outlaw at the federal level and ban private American oligarch money from controlling our elections. I will work to ban that private money in Washington. I will work to ban critical race theory so that our kids aren't indoctrinated to hate each other and hate our country. And I will work to secure our southern border and the American people. I worked in the administration. I worked to secure the United States on behalf of all of your viewers. And I'm ready. I stand by to do it again on behalf of Pennsylvania. Stay with NBC10 at issue as we bring you more of the candidates running for office during Decision 2020.